All right, looks like there's lots of people here and we're running late, so uh, let's get started. You guys ready on the recording side? Okay, great. Uh, so what I'm gonna talk about today is .NET Reflection, which is a technique in C Sharp for inspecting what your program is doing. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you're here for Family Guy or you're here for shiny surfaces, this is not your talk. So this is your last chance to leave without offending me. No takers? Okay, awesome. Um, so, Here's the plan. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what reflection is and why it's interesting to you. I'm gonna look a little bit at application structure in Unity because reflection is really about the structure of your application. Unity already has a notion of structure. Um, we're then gonna learn about .NET application structure, show some code and demos, answer a bunch of questions, and try and finish in 30 minutes. So I'll be done in about 12.45, and JB is gonna come up for the second half hour and talk about uh, mono.cecil and some of the cool stuff he's doing. Um, before I start, I'd like to get a quick show of hands. Uh, who's developing with Unity? Presumably everybody. Uh, who's a programmer? Who's using C Sharp? Who knows what reflection is? Who's actually using it? Uh, quite a few people. In anger? <laughs> Excellent. Okay, uh, so that gives me a little bit of an idea. Hopefully, uh, I'm gonna cover, start with a pretty light introduction and then show some of the interesting things you can do with it. So hopefully it's not too rudimentary for the people who know about it and not too technical for the people who haven't seen it before. Uh, so what is reflection? Um, it's a way of looking at objects really closely. So in a .NET program, in a C-sharp program, everything you write is in a class. Everything that runs in, is an instance of a class or static members. Um, and with reflection, you can get really close to those objects. You can dig deep into them and see what's going on and examine uh, not just the data, but their behavior. Uh, you can get really close to those objects. And uh, as the famous Scotsman's quilt, kilt, if you're wondering what's under there, you can use reflection to find out. You can actually inspect private members in a .NET program using reflection. <laughs> but is it really useful? Why would you want to do this? Um, I'm gonna try and give a quick motivation up front as to why you should want to know about reflection. Um, first of all, because you can kind of dig into the program and pick the pieces apart and do stuff procedurally, uh, you can write code to manipulate other code, which is great for tools and editors. Uh, it's useful for writing debugging scripts, and there's a bunch of kind of interesting things you can do. You can also use it to um, just learn about the APIs you're using. If you've got a third-party library, you can use reflection to learn more about how that library is doing what it does. I'm not gonna use the phrase reverse engineering during this talk. Um, so let's do a quick demo of some of the things you can do with reflection. So I'm gonna pop over to Unity here. Um, first thing I'm gonna show is, let's see, in the console window here, uh, I've got this little object called Hacktastic. It's got a few icons it knows about. And uh, let's see if I do this first, if I run it. It's gonna print a few messages in the console. Hello world, the world is warming, space debris has crashed. So we've got an information message, a warning, and an error. Now, where it gets interesting is if I run it again, I can manipulate those icons. So that's not a feature that's exposed in the editor, um, but what I've been able to do is look at the private members of the console window and manipulate the icons that it's displaying. So I wouldn't put that in the really useful class, but it is kind of interesting and it shows you the type of stuff you can do uh, when you have the tools of reflection at your disposal. Um, I'll show you another quick thing I've been working on is uh, this window called appropriate, appropriately enough reflector. Uh, it follows your selection. You can look at any object in your scene, drill down into it. And uh, if I turn on debug, what I'm looking at here is all the properties of these objects in the scene. So what I've got is kind of a, uh, it's sort of like a multi-inspector. I can dig through the, the scene view and look at all the objects in the scene. Uh, it works on assets as well. So I can click down here and see the properties of this stuff as well. Um, this could have the ability to run methods and things like that. It's kind of a tool that I've been using during my development and just adding features to as I want them. Uh, it's not on the asset store yet, but it might be someday soon. Um, so at that point, I haven't said anything at all about how I'm doing that. That was just to kind of show you that some of the things you can do with reflection and why it might be interesting to do so. So editor tools, poking into other people's assemblies, um, that kind of thing. Uh, reflection is really about looking at the structure of a program. 
So you can, you can go through all the assemblies that are loaded. Each of those assemblies, you can look at the types. Each type, you can look at properties. Anything about that program is accessible through reflection. So you guys are thinking, okay, I'm using Unity. I already know that my application has a structure. I know how that works. You know, why do I need this reflection stuff? So in a Unity application, typically you've got one or more scenes. Each scene has a bunch of game objects. Each game object has a bunch of components. Each component has a bunch of properties. And you can see those in the editor. Um, and you can also see them in code if you want to. So are you familiar with the source code for how to manipulate through that Unity structure? Probably most of you are. Uh, so I'm going to, yeah, OK. So here's a quick example of how you would reflect on your scene using the built-in uh, APIs inside Unity. So if you want to log a bunch of information about a game object, um, maybe I'll use my mouse as a pointer. Let's see if that works. Uh, so you can log the name of the game object. You can iterate through all the components. Uh, for each component, you can get the name of its type. Uh, then Unity has this serialized object, serialized property API. Uh, that's how you look at all the properties that are showing up in the inspector. Um, so I'm just getting the serialized object of that component. I'm getting the first property. Uh, while there's more visible properties, I'm going to log the property type, the property name, and the property value. And yeah, for those of you who've actually used this API, it's not quite that simple, but conceptually that's how it works. And then I can carry on down the scene. For each child transform, each child of that game object, I can dig deeper and log that object recursively and just learn everything about the scene. And just to see that in action. So in here, we've got the usual stuff. Uh, you can see all the properties of objects. You can go through the, the uh, Unity editor. Um, this is my little uh, script that does that manually. So it's inspect me as thing object. It's going to inspect that thing. Uh, when I run that, it's got a thing component. It's got a, here, let's see if I click back on this. So it's got 